Now let's analyze this Bose Acoustima 6 Series 3. That applies also to the Model 10, they are the same. For those of you in a hurry, this is the connection diagram. Just attach an RCA connector or female or male connector to pin 14 and 15. 15 being the ground and 14 the positive one. So if you have your connector, just attach it like this to these two pins. From there, this is your subwoofer low level input. Now in your home theater ampl amplifier, locate the subwoofer low level output or pre-out. And the, this is in here in this amplifier. And let's connect from the RCA in the amplifier to the subwoofer unit to the RCI that we just connected to pin 14 and, and 15. And then the satellite speakers should be connected directly to the amplifier. And there you have your connection for this subwoofer. Now, for those of you who wants to learn a little bit more on how we find these connections and how this amplifier works, uh, stay tuned. The way this subwoofer unit works is pretty simple. You have the subwoofer and five satellite speakers, and also you have a DB15 connector. That DB15 connector receives five amplified uh, signals from the main amplifier and also the low level input for the subwoofer. And from there, you connect the five satellite speakers. Let's see why and how. Let's open it up. Okay, from here, you can see it's very similar to the, for example, the lifestyle subwoofers. But if you can see here, it has a lot of capacitors, coils, and big uh, wattage uh, resistors. Let me unplug this <clears throat> and look at this. This tell me that this is mostly, if not all, it is a non-digital circuit. This, all of this uh, seems like a crossover. Here you have the inputs and the outputs. Uh, the AC, the speaker outputs, and the speaker inputs, the DB connector. I don't have anything from this subwoofer. I only received the, the subwoofer. So I have to look into an, uh, some manuals online in order to see how it should be connected. Let's uh, remove the amplifier. This is the amplifier. Very similar, the heat sink and the arrangement, like the lifestyle, but I can see it doesn't have the many circuits as the lifestyle unit. And looking at the transformer, it's very, very small, so I'm guessing this is a very low wattage unit. It has only one speaker, as you can see this di diagram. Other subwoofers from the same area used to have two or, or even three subwoofers uh, speakers. Some of them are even with double coil for for it, like this unit. But these are passive units. So again, this transformer looks pretty pretty small. So I am guessing this is for 50, 30 watts maybe. Let's go back to the input, uh, circuit input board. Uh, let me pull it out a little bit more. Uh, almost, oh, here you have. Okay, this is the input board. Like the other subwoofers, we have two units, two boards, one for the inputs. Here you can see the traces, they are go directly to the crossovers. So there's no amplification for the satellite speakers, only for the subwoofer. But you still connect this, this speaker to here because they need to be filtered out. Here is the input for the AC. I don't see any switch. I don't see any. So I'm guessing there is a triac here. This is where the switch is supposed to be. So it or either it, it is always on or it gets uh, turned on when you plug in something into the subwoofer. Here you can see the traces there. It is going to the, these circuits here. They are look like operation amplifiers in here. 
Yep, those are uh, operation amplifiers. There should be some of them for pre-amplification, also for mixing the left and right channel, and also for filtering out the subwoofer frequencies. This is the lifestyle five uh, unit. As you can see, almost everything is is digital, and this is almost e oh, well everything is analogic in here. Not nothing is dig digital here, so it, it will be pretty simple to decipher. Here is the amplifier. Uh, if you can see, the lifestyle five is also has this bracket to press the circuits to the heatsink very similar but this is much much simple you can see the power supply bridge rectifier these are lms so that must be voltage regulator these are the other four are darlington transistors so that must be the amplifier so this confirms that we have only one amplifier difference with the Lifestyle 5, that it has five amplifiers for the satellite speakers and those transistors in the bottom for amplifier the sound for the subwoofer. So I believe we can work only with this amplifier, I'm not sure, but uh, going back to the input board, we can get rid of the, or it just ignore the crossover and fo focus in this part on the top of the screen the, here as the here are the operation amplifiers so we just need to eliminate the inputs for the speakers and trace the pins to these operation amplifiers and we get the subwoofer input back to the amplifier i just confirmed these are darlington uh, uh, transistors in the middle so it will be a push-pull, I guess, uh, amplifier. And the other two are uh, uh, voltage regulators, variable uh, voltage regulator. So the principle of working in here is that you get the amplify uh, output of the amplifier injected to the crossover the, for the five speakers, then in the output to the speakers. And you should have another pair of pins that are used for the subwoofer input that goes into an operational amplifier, then to the main main amplifier, and then to the speakers. So in order to identify which pins are for the subwoofer input, we just um, eliminate the ones that we know that are for destined for our functions, for example, the speakers. And since we find a, a tr triac in the circuit, we know that we don't need a signal to turn it off. The, the subwoofer will turn on automatically when it detects a signal. So from 50 pins, we should have um, 10 pins for the speakers, uh, left, right, uh, left, right, center, two for the surround sounds, two and two pins for the subwoofer uh, so we are left with three pins so maybe those three pins are not going to be used I don't know let's see here with the multimeter in diode mode or continuity mode I have identified uh, several of the pins that goes into the crossover in fact you can tell for the wider of the of the trace that those should be speakers because it will handle like 20, 30 watts. So it, ca it cannot be just a small trace. So the input for the subwoofer should be a very, very thin uh, trace in the circuit board. For example, these two are very thin uh, lines, so I'm guessing this should be the subwoofer input because it doesn't require to uh, to transport many uh, high, higher currents. And just this pin is number 15, goes into here. I'm gonna put the multimeter into pin 15. 
be careful not to touch the ground because we can get confused. And here we have pin 15, goes to a resistor, then looks like a capacitor. We are good because we use capacitors to filter DC currents. Uh, amplifiers doesn't like to be input with DC current, so we use capacitors to filter that out. And yeah, pre pretty much we have deciphered the inputs because because all the circuit we have here is the operational amplifiers. Uh, okay, this is weird. We have no destination for this pin. Okay, here we go. Yep. Yep, pin 14 and 15 are the, the ones. This is the potentiometer for the bus in level. And the other one is like, uh, it says LE if I thinking what i don't know <laughs> i don't know what lef means but yeah this is the circuit P pin 15 is the ground pin 14 is the positive goes to to the subwoofer output of the amplifier and from the amplifier we can connect the five speakers if your amplifier doesn't have crossover integrated then you should buy one of these connectors and create your own cable. But uh, most of the home tier amplifiers have already the crossover input. You just enable it in the, in the amplifier and you're good to go. And as always in this program, I'm very lazy making connectors and cables and things like that. So I'm just going to attach this RCA female connector to pin 14 and 15. And from there, in order to test it, I'm going to put the multimeter in in resistance testing. That will inject a very slow voltage into the connector. And we hear some noises in the subwoofer, so that means we are we have the correct pins. Now let's put a little bit of of hot glue in order to avoid getting them touch each other. And we are good to test. Let's test it into the amplifier. Okay, it is working, but the camera cannot pick very well how the subwoofer is moving. Let's put some salt in there so you can see a jump. Now we're talking. You can see it, it is working. It is not very loud, but it sounds pretty good. I think this is for uh, small rooms, not sure. I never see one working at the fullest, but because it doesn't, it is not very loud. So I'm guessing it is for small rooms. I like the sound of it. I'm not planning on making the whole connector i'm not planning on using this this is just so you can learn a little bit more and also i learned how to to decipher the connections input for these kind of subwoofers so i leave you with this image of the subwoofer i put in the fj cruiser i put this logitech in the past video that i make because the original box doesn't sound very good and i'm planning on buying some other box or maybe making a custom one in the future but anyway thank you for watching my videos thank you for subscribing commenting and all that take care